الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون tonight in sha Allah we will be talking about al khusufat al thalatha wa an al dukhan the three great sinkings of the earth and the smoke We're still talking about uh, the the major signs that will take place before the day of judgment and uh, uh, the ulama, they said these three disasters, which are the al khusufat al thalatha or the three great sinkings of the earth, will take place before the day of judgment. They will be a major sign before the, the final day. And al khasf in Arabic is when the earth opens up and swallow what is what was above uh, the ground. It is very similar to a sinkhole. Or sometimes it is translated as a, a landslide, uh, but these landslides are uh, are happening all the time. Are happening all the time. Uh, there have been many incidents throughout the history, and actually, if even here in Canada, they said you know thousands of them are happening every day, uh, every uh, every year in Canada. If you go to uh, Natural Resources Canada, they will tell you that every year we have these uh, you know thousands of these landslides, but these are minor events. Uh, Al Khasf, you know the, the the you know the sinking of the earth took place in the past as a punishment. We'll talk about some incident that took place in the in the past and what Rasulullah said about it, about some of them that will happen in the future, apart aside from these three major signs that will take place before the Day of Judgment. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, who explained Sahih al-Bukhari when talking about this ahadith, he said, Qad wujida al khasfu fi mawadi'. Who said that the sinking of the earth was found in some places. وَلَكِنْ يُحْتَمَلْ أَنْ يَكُونَ الْمُرَادُ بِالْخُسُوفِ الثَّلَاثَ قَدْرًا زَائِدًا عَلَى مَوُوجِدْ He said, but it seems that these three May, uh, three uh, great sinkings of the earth, or g three sinkings of the earth, will be greater and bigger in size. How big? Allah Taala alam. We cannot. I mean, we don't have knowledge about it. Only Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows. And they could be uh, the result of an earthquake. You know, these sinkings could be the results of earthquakes that will take place in different places. Rasulullah told us about the direction, but he didn't tell us about the location. The only location that I know we know exactly is the Arabian, for one of them, that one of them will take a place in the Arabian Peninsula, but we will talk about them at the end, inshallah. So as I said, you know, uh, these landslides or these sinkholes or these sinkings of the earth have happened before, they are happening, this minor sinking are happening all the time. But uh, when Rasulullah includes these three sinkings among the major signs of the Day of Judgment, this indicates that this will be, uh, uh, this will be bigger, these sinkings will be bigger, and they will have a huge impact on the life of human beings on earth. Uh, our scholars are saying that these sinkings, as I said, could come or could happen as a form of punishment for those who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rejected his guidance. And he, they said that some good people who live among them, among those who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, might be affected might be affected, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise them on the Day of Judgment with their good intention. They were not disobedient, like the ones, the army that will attack the Kaaba to arrest the one, the person who will seek refuge in the Kaaba at the end of times. And the ulama are saying, most likely this person will be Al-Mahdi, who will appear before the end of times. 
So this army that will come from the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause the earth to swallow this army. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said there, are, there will be innocent people among them. People who will do business with them, people who will be passing by or talking to them or socializing with them. But they will be uh, affected by this uh, disaster and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise them based on their uh, intention which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not take them to account because they had to mingle with that army at that time wallahu ta'ala alam but these sinkings uh, rasulullah sallallahu mentioned them in a couple of ahadith that will they will happen i'm not talking about the three major ones other sinkings that they will happen as a form of punishment and there are many ahadith i have two of them here in front of me hadith aisha radiyallahu anha in which rasulullah sallallahu said yakunu fi akhir hadhihi al-ummati khasf wa masakh wa qadh khasf wa masakh wa qadh so rasulullah sallallahu qalat aisha qalat qultu ya rasulullah anahliku wa fina salihun هذا جواب عائشة رضي الله عنها نذكر حديث زينب بنت شحش عندما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وين للعرب من 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 شر قد اقترب لما تكلم عن يأجوج من مأجوج ماذا كان رد أم المؤمنين زينب أن أهلكوا وفينا الصالحون فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في ذلك الحديث نعم إذا كثر الخبث هنا في هذا الحديث يقول إجابة لسؤال عائشة نعم إذا كثر الخبث هذا الحديث موجود في سنن الترمذي وصححه العلامة الألباني رحمة الله عليه. So in this hadith Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم is saying there will be at the end of in the end of this ummah. So he's not talking about the end of times and he's not talking about a different nation or a different community. Muslims you need to pay attention to this. He's talking about the ummah of Islam. And Rasulullah in this hadith is saying there will be in the end of this ummah sinking, stoning, and transformation. Sinking, khasf, the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause the earth to swallow some people and beside their properties and their, and their houses and their, uh, like what happened to Qarun. We'll mention his story today. And stoning, qadf, they will be stoned. They will receive uh, stones from, from the sky. And transformation, which is more dangerous here. Transformation, people will be transformed into animals. This is something that happened to some, uh, some of the children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about their story in Surah Al-A'raf, in Surah Al-Baqarah. Their story is mentioned in the Quran. Those who disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Sabbath, when they used to, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, don't fish. There's the village that was beside on the beside the, the sea. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them, do not catch any fish on Saturday. And they played and they tried to find some some heel, some stratagems to you know to uh, to avoid or violate the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Besides some other, maybe some other you know acts of disobedience, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran that they were transformed into Monkeys. This, this is in the Quran. So Rasulullah is saying that this will happen to a group of this ummah. But at the end of times, because he said in the end of this ummah, sinking, al khasf, stoning, al qathf, and al masq, transformation into animals. So Aisha made the same question Zainab radiallahu anha made before. Are we going to be destroyed while righteous people are still among us? So they used to thought at that time, if we have righteous people among us, then we will not be destroyed. But Rasulullah said, yes, if evil prevails. Naam, idha kathura al khabath. Fi hadithin akhar rawa Imran ibn Hussein, anna Rasulullah qal fi hadhi al umma. Lam yakul fi akhiri hadhi al umma, qal fi hadhi al umma, wal ghalib anna yahduth fi akhiri al umma. Wallahu ta'ala alam mata, Allahu alam, walakin dhakar alamat. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned some signs that are prevailing now, that are very common, that are very common nowadays. So he said, فِي هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ خَسْفٌ وَمَسْخٌ وَقَذْفٌ فَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ وَمَتَى ذَاكَ قَالَ إِذَا ظَهَرَتِ الْقَيْنَاتِ وَالْمَعَازِفِ وَشُرِبَتِ الْخُمُورِ so in this hadith, Rawahul Imam al-Tirmidhi wa sahaha wa kathalik al-Albani, 
Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this ummah there will be sinking, stoning and transformation into animals. So Rasulullah, uh, a man from among the Muslims said, O Messenger of Allah, and when will this happen? So asking about the time. So Rasulullah did not give an exact time, but he said when female singers, Al-Qaynat in Arabic is female singers, uh, musical instruments, uh, it doesn't mean that men are allowed to sing or, you know, but, but uh, this is what Rasulullah mentioned. Female singers and, and musical instruments will become popular and wine drinking will become very common or prevails. People will be drinking alcohol in every town and every city. There are some Muslim countries there where people, I was told by a family, they said we went to a Muslim city in the Middle East and they were looking for a hotel that doesn't sell alcohol, we didn't find any. So this hadith was collected by Imam Tirmidhi, some other scholars, but Sheikh Al-Albani rahmatullah was an expert in the science of hadith. He said it is a hadith sahih. Uh, among the nations, the old nations as I said, sinking was a form of punishment and this is what happened to Qarun. Qarun who lived at the time of Musa alayhi salam. What did Allah tell us about him in Surah Al-Qasas? فَخَسَفْنَا وَبِدَارِهِ فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and we caused the earth to swallow him and swallow his home. In Surah Al-Qasas. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about his story. What was the story of Qarun? Qarun was the cousin of Musa alayhi salam. That's why some ulama believed that he might have believed in the message of Musa or in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Banu Israel were the Muslims at that time. Were the Muslims of that time. So he was from the people of Musa, actually the cousin of Musa alayhi salam. So one of the descendants of Ya'qub alayhi salam and the Qarun was the cousin, first cousin of Musa alayhi salam. And he, some ulama believed that he was not Muslim. He did not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned him many times with Fir'aun and Haman. Fir'aun is known, the dictator of Egypt at that time. And Haman was like a prime minister to Fir'aun. So Qarun was mentioned with them. Why? Because he was working as a vice gerent to Fir'aun over Banu Israel. Like he was watching over them, supervising them. In Qaruna kana min qawmi Musa fabagha alayhim. Bagha alayhim, he transgressed against them. He abused their rights. So he was appointed by Fir'aun to be like an administrator, deputy, over the, to look after the, the you know, the, the affairs of Banu Israel. But he did not, he was serving Fir'aun and he abused the rights of his own people. This is one thing. And he might have disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other thing, he became arrogant because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him with wealth. He was extremely wealthy, Qarun. Extremely wealthy. Uh, but what did he say about his wealth when he was, uh, you know, when, when the, uh, you know, the pious people, the good people in his community told him, you need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this ni'am. These bounties. And he said, Qala innama utituhu ala ilmin indi. That was his behavior. That was his attitude. He said, he said about his wealth, I was only given it because of knowledge that I have. Because of my skills. So basically, a mu'min would say, Alhamdulillah, this is a ni'mah from Allah. I was given this wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with this wealth, grant me this wealth. Alhamdulillah wa shukru lillah. And the, uh, the mu'min would always attribute all his favors and bounties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about him in the Quran, he's saying it, it was because of my knowledge, my skills. I had a good understanding about business, how to make business and how to make money. And that's it. That was his, uh, you know, his attitude. Be beside the other problems, beside the other problems, that was his punishment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused the earth to swallow him and swallow his house. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa al These three sinkings, the ulama are not sure about the timings, but uh, uh, a scholar from Egypt, maybe you know him, uh, he's a TV personality, Muhammad Hassan, Sheikh Muhammad Hassan, he believes that the believers will not witness 
these events, the sinking, the great sinking of the earths. Other ulama are not sure about the exact timing. He used to believe, or he believed, he's still alive, he believes that the other major signs will happen, and the last ones will be, the last four will be these three sinkings, and the fire that will appear in Aden, in the southern part of the Arabian Peninsula, it will push people to go and to gather in the area of Hashem. He said, uh, every believer, he believes that every believer, based on his research, every believer will die before uh, the sinking, these three sinkings of the earth. Allah will send a wind, a light wind, that'll take, that it will take away the soul of every believer. In the hadith of Rasulullah he said, even if the believing man goes inside a cave, inside a cave, this wind will go after him and it will take his soul away, he will pass away. When this wind touches him or touches her, then they will pass away, the believers. And then only those who are like the worst people, the worst of all people will stay. And these people will witness this evil people who rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the hadith, Rasulullah said they will be behaving like animals on earth. Those people will witness the Day of Judgment. That is his understanding. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Here in this lessons, I'm following the, the order of Sheikh Yusuf al-Wabil. He wrote a good book about Ashrat al-Sa'a. It was the dissertation of his PhD or master's degree, to earn his master's degree or PhD, I'm not sure. It's a good book in Arabic. So I'm following his order here. So he placed, you know, uh, uh, the three sinkings after the appearance of Ya'juj and Ma'juj, Wallahu ta'ala alam. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa say about these three sinkings? He said the first one will happen in the east, which means the east of al Medina, because the reference point here is the city of Medina. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when talking about them, he was in the city of Medina. So the eastern part of the world from city of Medina includes Arabian Peninsula, or the side, that side from the Arabian Peninsula, Iraq, Iran, Khorasan, Russia, till you reach Japan or, or, or uh, you pass China. Maybe the last one will be South Korea and uh, both Koreas and, and Japan. But that could be the last point, Wallahu ta'ala alam. And uh, he said the second one will happen in the west, which means in the western part of the world, but starting from the city of Medina. So that would include North Africa or Africa, Europe and North America till we reach California, Wallahu ta'ala alam. And the third one, he said, it will happen in the Arabian Peninsula. This is what we have as a knowledge about uh, the three, the, the three you know, great sink sinkings. Uh, as I said, you know, many scholars are not very sure about the timing, the exact timings of these events. But one of them, I mentioned his name, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Hassan, he believes that this, these three thinkings will happen just before the Day of Judgment. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam, and the believers will not witness these uh, events. Ad-Dukhan uh, is one of the major signs that will appear towards the end of time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Dukhan, the smoke, in Surah Al-Dukhan. So there is a surah in the Quran that is called Al-Dukhan, the smoke. So in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, talking to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَرْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَأْتِ السَّمَاءُ بِدُخَانٍ مُبِينٍ يَغْشَ النَّاسَ هَذَا عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ These are ayah 10 and 11. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clearly mentioned the word Al-Dukhan. So here, uh, which means in English, then watch, talking to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, of course, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will not uh, or يعني, he will not witness this, uh, this event. But when talking to him, when addressing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be addressing whom? His ummah at the same time. So if he doesn't witness these events, no, a group of his ummah will, will witness them. Wallahu ta'ala alam. So he said, then watch for the day when the sky will bring a visible smoke, a visible smoke covering the people. This is a painful torment, uh, covering the people, yaghsha nas that means it will be covering the whole earth, wallahu ta'ala alam. Now, what is the nature of this smoke? There are two opinions, two famous opinions in the books of tafsir.
The first opinion is a little bit different. The first opinion is about something else that took place at the time of Rasulullah in the city of Mecca. That was the opinion of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And Al Tabari was inclined, Imam Al Tabari, a great mufassir, was inclined to this opinion. So Ibn Mas'ud said, This is not the smoke that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about in this ayah, is not the smoke. Well, he had a different opinion. He said, When the people of Mecca disobeyed the Messenger of Allah and rejected his invitation to Islam, he, Rasulullah made dua against them, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test them with famine and lack of resources. Sinina kasinini kasinina Yusuf, kasinini Yusuf alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his dua and they were stricken with famine. This is what Ibn Mas'ud is saying. He said to the extent that they were able to see something that looked like a smoke in the sky due to hunger and fatigue. Uh, and that is, as I said, the opinion of one Sahabi who is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Imam al-Tabari was inclined to this opinion. The second opinion, and this is the opinion of majority of scholars, among them the Sahaba Ali ibn Abi Talib, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, Ibn Abbas was a great mufassir. Uh, anhum ajma'in. Ibn Kathir uh, was following this opinion and the majority of scholars they said actually the smoke that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about in Surah Al-Dukhan is a major sign that is yet to come before the end of times and their main proof is that Rasulullah sallam included the Dukhan in the famous hadith that I mentioned before in which he mentioned 10 signs Hadith of Hudayfa ibn Asid al-Ghifari in Sahih Muslim, he mentioned 10 signs, one of them is the Dukhan, the smoke. So if these nine, uh, you know, the other nine signs, all of them will happen before the Day of Judgment, and they will be major signs for the Day of Judgment, how, يعني, does it make sense, does it make sense if Rasulullah was included Dukhan that takes place or that took place during his time, in Mecca 1400 years ago, it doesn't make any sense here. There is no connection between these nine because these nine, we all believe that they will happen before the Day of Judgment. It will be major signs. The other, the appearance of Isa السلام, or the descent of Isa, Isa السلام, did not come. The Dajjal, the, the emergence of the Dajjal, uh, the rising of the sun from the west. Adab, the beast of the land that will be talking to the people and these three sinkings uh, that will take a place before the Day of Judgment. So Dukhan here was mentioned, one of them, and in a different hadith also Rasulullah mentioned the Dukhan among those major, he included the Dukhan with these major events. He said, Badiru bil a'mali sitten. Badiru bil a'mali sitten. And here Rasulullah is telling us actually about some benefits of learning about this uh, branch of knowledge. So he, he said, Badiru bil a'mali, hasten to do good deeds, hurry to engage in good deeds. Sitten, before six things happen. So here he's talking about six things. Badiru bil a'mal. is عندك وقت الآن. Try to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to increase your good deeds. Try to keep the ties of kinship. Pray on time. Give sadaqat. Uh, make hajj if you didn't make hajj. So badiru bil a'mal. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Read Quran. Uh, you know, help other people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Try to collect hazanat as much, as much as you can. Don't wait. Don't say sofa. I will do that when I grow up. When I do that. When this happened, I will do that. There are many people who said, if you talk to them about prayer, inshallah, I will start after I get married. Or Hajj, مثلاً, inshallah, I'll make Hajj after my children. All of them get married. I finish the building of my house. And all the plans, the worldly plans are done. And then he will, inshallah, he will make Hajj. And uh, do you have a guarantee that you're going to stay alive till that time? There's no guarantee. So Rasulullah he said, is saying here, Badiru bil a'mal, hasten to do good deeds before six things happen. And the first thing he mentioned, Tulu'u shamsi min maghribiha, the rising of the sun from the west, which we'll talk about it, inshallah. 
the next halaqa, but the next halaqa will not be next Friday, nor the other one. It will be January 1st, inshallah. I will tell you about that at the end. So Rasulullah sallallahu said, Tulu'u shamsi min maghribiha, number one, which is uh, the rising of the sun from the west. Awid dukhan, or the smoke. Awid dajjal, or the dajjal, or dab, or the, the land, or the, the beast of the land. أو خاصة أحدكم. What is خاصة أحدكم? Your own death. So, hasten to do good deeds. One of the things that you have to worry about, we talked about it last halaqa, your own death. Because if death comes, then this knowledge actually will not be beneficial. I mean, if your death comes. So you have to hurry and hasten to do good deeds before your uh, Malak al maut the angel of death, will come to you, will pay you a visit. This Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and yuhsina khitamana. And then he said, Aw Amr al Amma, number six, Amr al Amma, many ulama they said general could be translated in Arabic as general calamity, but many ulama they said it could be the day of judgment. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Yani Wallahu ta'ala alam. But uh Rasulullah sallam the point is mentioned the Dukhan in this hadith among those major signs that will take a place before the Day of Judgment. Of course, the, your own death could happen at any time. That's an exception. But the other five, they are major events that will take place at the end of time. So at Dukhan, it must be one of them, uh, the smoke. And, and there are some athar that when a Dukhan comes, it will be a punishment for the disbelievers. But the believer will feel like he's having cold, like zukam. There are some athar from the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They said this, the effect of this smoke on the believers will be like cold. Someone was having cold and coughing and it will be light. But it will be a punishment for any disbeliever here. So the, the Dukhan, you know, will be distinguishing between people like the Dabba, you know, the, 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 the beast of the land will know, will recognize the believers and the disbelievers. So these are supernatural events, yani something that you can't understand with your own mind. If you try to reason, try to understand them or explain them, it's very difficult to find any scientific explanation here. People are trying these days to try a scientific explanation for the rising of the sun from the west, but there is nothing that is well established. And we'll talk about it, inshallah, next halaqa. People are writing on the internet and spreading rumors that NASA has mentioned something like that. Inshallah, we'll talk about it next time when we have to, because I mean, we don't want other people to, yeah, you know, to, especially when we write something that we are not sure about it and we spread it and then it, it doesn't, it turns to be false. People just making fun of Muslims and say these Muslims are uh, just, you know, spreading silly things and if we have a proof from the Quran and the Sunnah then we we should not shy away from announcing this knowledge and spreading this knowledge because we have confidence in this guidance in this pure guidance from coming that is coming from the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam anything else we have to have either a solid proof as I said, from the Quran Sunnah or a solid proof from science. And science is difficult, I mean, to, uh, you know, to say that this is well established and this is not a theory, this is a fact, a scientific fact. It's not easy, I mean, to... But we'll leave it to scientists. Here we'll try to focus on the guidance of the Quran and the Sunnah. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Tayyib, jazakumullahu khairan. This is what we have tonight, inshallah. Uh, before you, uh, you leave or before I give you a chance for your uh, questions, inshallah, I'll give you time for Q&A. I would like to tell you that next Friday, we will not have a halaqa, Friday, December 18th. It will be a fundraising, sponsored by uh, Ikna Relief, and the place is Thorn Cliff, Green View Community Association. It is found on uh, 5 600 Center Street, Northeast. And it will be, the fundraising will start at um, six o'clock inshallah so we would like to encourage people to uh, to go to this fundraising and uh, the, the purpose of this fundraising is to sponsor you know families syrian families who are coming from overseas uh, so ikna canada is planning to sponsor 100 families all over canada uh, we'll have some of them here uh, actually we have some of them we received some of them here 
some of them four or five months ago to families I know personally two families who've been here for four five months or six months and there are some families I think who uh, uh, arrived uh, maybe uh, two days ago or maybe yesterday uh, December 10th they were talking about December 10th so uh, our brothers in Ikna are trying to inshallah to sponsor 100 families so we'd like to help them this is a noble purpose we shouldn't only watch the news and cry and feel pain feel the pain if you feel the pain reach your pocket and try to help your brothers and sisters and uh, the other Friday which is December 25th uh, it will be Christmas uh, we don't have a program here because Sheikh Naveed is organizing another program in 8 and 8. So we don't have, we don't want to have two programs at the same time. One here and one in 8 and 8. Sheikh Naveed will be having a program about the inner dimensions of Salat. And it will be from 5 to 8. So 3 hours. 5 to 8 in 8 and 8 Christmas a night which is December 25th. December 26th we'll have another program here which is Saturday and this is a long program. It will start from 12.30 uh, Dhuhr, after Dhuhr here in this place it will be Saturday 26th, December 26th till 7 o'clock and uh, different speakers will come all of them are local speakers and uh, We'll be talking about the seven under the shade of the throne of Ar-Rahman on the Day of Judgment. Those who will be under the shade of Allah's throne on the Day of Judgment. The seven categories of people. So we'll go through this hadith and every speaker will talk about one group of people. So there will be seven groups of people who will be enjoy the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment. They will be under the shade of His throne. We'll be talking about these people and their qualities. I think it's a very important program. I would uh, encourage you to come, inshallah, and attend this program. It's a long program. You don't have to attend the whole program. It's up to you. But it will be from Dhuhr till 7 o'clock, inshallah, Saturday, December 26. So basically, we don't have halaqa next week, and we don't have a halaqa the other Friday. We'll come back, inshallah, January 1st, 2016. We we'll continue this program. Jazakumullah khair.